to Kogi State now, where the government on Wednesday accused the Federal Ministry of Health and the Nigeria Center for Disease Control of bringing machines that had been programmed to record positive COVID-19 cases only to the Federal Medical Center in Lokoja. A statement by the Commissioner for Information, Kingsley Farmer, said sample collection materials had been infected with COVID-19. The state government has created mobile courts to try violators of the lockdown order in the Kababunu local government area of the state. Meanwhile, the lockdown came after last week's confirmation of two cases of COVID-19 by the NCDC. And joining us now to discuss the rising cases in the country is rheumatologist from Joss University Teaching Hospital, Dr. Courage Umumago. Good morning, Dr. Courage. Good morning, Amaka. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for asking. It's good to have you on this morning. Now, Dr. Courage, the numbers keep rising and the battle against the virus continues. What's noteworthy, what noteworthy policies are being pursued, you know, or should also be pursued at different state levels? Well, at this point, we must um, agree that all over the world, uh, people are beginning to realize that, well, we needn't probably have gone you know, the route went. Uh, even uh, there's, there's a lot of quarrel within the scientific community mm. about uh, the data and the modeling that were used and even whether governments, um, you know, uh, you, you know, built their, their control measures according to what science uh, was saying at the time. So a lot of policies have been pursued. Um, including the lockdown that we have had, and we cannot totally say it was not effective. It, had its, it has its effect, uh, probably slowed down the, the spread of the virus to, um, to some extent. But now we are beginning to have a rethink, you know, looking at our population and, you know, the people who are at risk. Now we are realizing we probably need to have been more focused rather than generalized. You know, so those policies, may have had their impact, but it's difficult to measure at this time. Uh, what do we need to do now? I think we need to be more uh, focused in our approach. Um, Nigeria is a very young population. You know, who, uh, the uh, old people are very few, and uh, those with comorbidities also. You know, so what we need to do is to focus on protecting those people and let those who are less at risk, you know, be able to get back to their normal life and, and you know, stimulate the economy and secure our nation again. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Wumango, when you go out, it, it feels like, especially, uh, you know, from here in Lagos, it feels like nothing um, is happening again in terms of it just looks like life has come back to normal and coronavirus is not real. Um, why do we need to take this um, coronavirus issue more seriously now that the lockdown has been relaxed completely, if you like? Again, um, the, the, there's, there's something about health education in our culture <clears throat> that um, if people don't assimilate these things very early, uh, in a way we think that some of these things are foreign, you know, they are not real to us. And then if you look at our population, you see that there are still some people who never saw a patient with COVID, you know, so they never really have an idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been, you know, something in the air, you know, mystical. But But now, um, people need to know that, it, yes, it is serious. But again, you don't want to scare people in, in such a way that they are paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is that less than 10% of those who contact the virus will fall sick. You know, so they do need to take it serious because prevention is better than cure. It's rather that you don't have it than to, you know, to be looking at whether you are ill or you are not ill, okay? So people need to be aware. It's just like saying, um, why do you put mosquito nets in your house? You know, you want to prevent malaria. And we all know that malaria is endemic in Nigeria. 
we all have, everybody has uh, malaria at one point or the other, but yet we still take precautions. We still put mosquito nets. Some people sleep on that net, you know, on their bed. So it's important that we take adequate precautions because the likelihood is that you, you can never really say that this is the person that will fall sick, even though we know, you know, to some extent, these are people who are at risk and these are people who are likely not to fall ill, but that is not absolute, you know. So because of that, we must still take precaution. We need to be aware. And so for us, again, the health education should not stop, both from the media, from the PTF, and from everybody who has a sense of what this whole thing is. We must keep educating people and keep talking to them to let them know that it is a serious condition. It's a serious condition. Oh, and I mean, many people are saying where we are is at the point where we need to try as much as humanly possible to slow the spread. Because if you see from the numbers, it is increasing daily. Now, how well are we managing you know, that bit of slowing the spread and trying to flatten the curve on state level, in your opinion? I must, I must confess that it has gotten more difficult. You know, with the lockdown, it, it would have been a lot easier to curtail the spread and um, flatten the curve. So, but at this point, I don't think our focus should be on, um, you know, the number of positive people. You know, you, you are, because as you keep doing tests, you are accused, the number is going to be rising. You know, so we should we should redirect our attention to who are those at risk of being ill or dying from this condition. So the problem is not that people are going to get infected. The truth is that the moment we decide to open up the society, we have put everybody at risk of infection. So there, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, on the individual level, we need to take responsibility you know, wash your hands regularly, you know, wear face masks when you are going out, um, you know, use hand sanitizers where you don't have uh, water to wash and all of that. We'll do all of that. But we must not think of focusing on those who are likely to be severely affected by this condition and probably die from it. Those are the elderly people people with comorbid conditions like diabetes, uh, COP, uh, COPD, and all of that. So we need, to, we need to, you know, focus on those people. And there's also a chance that the, po the whole population getting infected means that there's a chance of herd immunity, you know. So we, we cannot really um, stop people from going about, you know, but we encourage them to take uh, appropriate precautions. Right. I think it's a very interesting aspect and perspective that you have brought into the conversation this morning. Well, and it leads me to my next question, which is we hear of the development of national testing kits. This effectively means greater testing, as you would agree. Now, how do you see this impacting on our success in, you know, combating the virus or having to deal with it in such a way that it doesn't so much affect our life, but, you know, people are moving on in spite of the reality of the virus? Yeah, so this is this is it's still important in the sense that if we are testing people and we are collecting their data, we are not just testing, you know, just to put up numbers. We are collecting their data so we are able to know the number of people who are infected and are at risk of, of illness. Okay, so if you test 100 people and 20 of them are in the 65 years and above age group, have uh, comorbidities like uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases, uh, diabetes, and all of that, then you now know how to direct your, your, your resources to take care of those 20 people, okay, to ensure that they don't fall ill. And if they fall ill, you have a place where you are going to take care of them and you have adequate provision for keeping them alive. Okay, oh. so increased testing, ongoing testing. You know, I, I said on this program some time ago that the, the plan of NCDC is to do a nationwide survey. You know, so that means that even when, you know, we have all the kids, 
we want everybody to be tested. So we know those who are infected, those who are not infected, and among those who are infected, those who are likely to have serious problems or even die from the disease. Lastly, before I let you go, Dr. Mumako, I'm sure you're following the events that is unfolding in Kogi State between you know, the state government and the NCDC. What do you make of that? This, this is not the first time in Africa, let me say, we are having this kind of thing. You know, Tambo Mbeki, the former president of South Africa, did this when HIV came on board. But the unfortunate thing was that his people died. So many people died in South Africa from HIV because um, Tambo Mbeki refused to acknowledge that HIV was real. And I think we are having similar situation now in, in Kogi State, you know, and we must, all of us as Nigerians, prevail on the government of, um, um, of Kogi State to allow reason, to allow science and reality, you know, to guide them, you know, so that people will not die. You know, because, the, like I said earlier, because we have a very young population in this country, People don't understand the impact of this condition, you know, because like you don't have so many elderly people, you know, and all of that, so you really don't know. That's why they, someone will have the opportunity of, you know, trying to say this is real or it's not real, it's false or it's not false, you know. But I think that um, we need to we need to wake up, you know. Let let the Kogi people join the rest of the country, and do what is right. Dr. Courage, thank you very much for your time with us this morning. And as always, please uh, do stay safe out there. And you too, Amaka. Thank you.